As a rookie, JaVale McGee landed in one of the worst possible situations. He started his career on that crazy Wizards team that featured Gilbert Arenas, Javaris Crittenden, Deshaun Stevenson, and Nick Young. For McGee, it was the basketball equivalent of getting caught up with the wrong crowd. And spending your formative years surrounded by those guys would mess anyone up. This is post-game. JaVale always had some underlying boneheaded tendencies, but Washington's terrible team and culture really enabled them to come to the surface. Any possible excuse or explanation for why Gilbert Arenas, loaded or not loaded, would have guns in a locker room in the NBA? A model franchise like the Spurs would have forced those bad habits out of him almost immediately. And Shaquille O'Neal roasting him on Shaq and a Fool every night only fueled the idea that McGee was nothing but a punchline. Hold him off! Hold him off! <laughs> there was a bigger, more fundamental problem too. JaVale wasn't taking advantage of his incredible physical tools or living up to his potential. McGee showed flashes and his stats were okay, but he mainly did it putting up empty numbers. He got a lot of his buckets outside the flow of the offense, or once the game had already been lost. But the tide finally started to turn when McGee was traded to Denver in March 2012. He almost immediately looked so much better on the freewheeling Nuggets. That was thanks in part to George Carl, one of the most successful coaches of all time and a master of maximizing the strengths of his players. This was also the first time JaVale had played on a team that actually moved the ball and looked for him on offense, and the results were spectacular. In his Nuggets debut, McGee threw down endless alley-oops and even won the game with a crazy tip jam off a missed free throw. But just as things were really looking up, injury struck. McGee missed all but five games in 2013 to 2014 after having surgery to repair a stress fracture in his leg. And the injury bug didn't let up. McGee managed just 23 games the following season and 34 games the year after that. And just to rub salt into the wounds, he was traded to the process trusting 76ers when they barely had a single recognizable player on their roster. He signed with the Mavs not long afterwards, but was waived once again. At this point, it would have been easy to write off McGee altogether. Injuries were getting the better of him, and he only ever had one and a half good seasons anyway. The public still perceived him as the old JaVale too, in large part thanks to Shaq. Oh. My boy is back! Oh. JaVale Boogie! No, he could Everybody said JaVale Ball! Oh. JaVale Ball! Oh. JaVale Ball! There was one team which saw things differently, the Golden State Warriors. They understood how good McGee was in Denver and took a chance on him in the summer of 2016. Now remember how good JaVale looked with the Nuggets due to having a team that moved the ball, employed a competent coach, and gave him a proper role? Well then it should have come as no surprise that McGee bounced back with Golden State. He didn't play big minutes, but he played important minutes, the opposite of his time in Washington. And he was highly productive in that time, putting up a career-high 23 points and 12 rebounds per 36 minutes. He maintained that during the playoffs too, averaging 23 points per 36 in the 2017 postseason and 19 per 36 in 2018. Having languished in a basketball wasteland to begin his career, McGee had established himself as an integral part of the greatest team since Jordan's Bulls, and he won back-to-back -back championships in the process. If you tried to predict McGee being on top of the world like that just a few years earlier, you would have been laughed out of the room. Things were going so well for JaVale that he even had the clout to fire back at Shaq for roasting him so much. McGee's next move was to the Lakers in 2018, a move which completed his stunning transition from a nothing team to a dynasty to the most storied franchise in basketball. Incredibly, GM LeBron had clearly said to himself, if we can't land a star big man, I want JaVale. Immediately, McGee became one of the team's most important players at both ends of the floor. For the first time ever, he made his mark as a legitimate starting center, putting up career highs in points, assists, and steals for the season. And he was doing all this alongside LeBron, a guy no one else on the team could figure out how to play with. On a team that couldn't get anything going, JaVale was out there playing the best basketball of his career. He then took things to yet another level on March 22, 2019, when he notched two career highs in one game with 33 points and 20 rebounds against the Nets. Clearly, a lot had changed in a short space of time. Just a few years earlier, DeMarcus Cousins was the best center in the league. But it wasn't long before the Lakers signed him as JaVale's backup. And when Boogie went down, his new backup was Dwight Howard, who was also the best center in the league in a previous life. Just take a second to think about how crazy that is. Think back to every other so-called boneheaded player from the past. How many of them actually got better as they aged? Not many, if any. Gilbert Arenas, Deshaun Stevenson, and Nick Young certainly didn't. All of McGee's achievements came against the odds. And this summer, he even had the luxury of being a coveted free agent. After being a punchline for so long, suddenly, he was the guy teams were chasing. 
what a difference a few years makes.